Hi there, and welcome to my online form automation tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking the data that you collect from an online form and connecting it to another app you use. In this case, we're going to be using this client lead form, and we're going to put that information into Trello to make it easier to manage those leads as they come in. So as you can see here, I've created a form in Google Forms, uh, which is good because it's online, it's free, and it's easy to connect. So here I've created a series of questions, just simple questions collecting the email address, their name, their company, and what their company does. I've also created an associated Google Sheet, which you can do directly from Google Forms using this button here. It's basically a way to track the responses from your form. As you can see, I've already filled out one response for the form, and the details have been entered here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Zapier, and I'm going to make a zap. Every zap is composed of at least two parts. The trigger, which tells an automation when it should run, and the action, which is what happens when the trigger is triggered. In our case, the trigger is a new entry to a Google Form. So I'm going to type in Google, click Google Forms, and I want it to act when there's a new response. So I'm going to click this option and continue. So now Zapier needs to be able to retrieve the data that Google Forms saves. So I need to connect my Google Forms account. I run through the options and click allow. And now Zapier has access. I can continue. And now I need to choose the spreadsheet that the data is going to be coming from. Uh, the spreadsheet is this one here. So the spreadsheet I'm going to choose is my client lead form responses. And the worksheet, there's only one worksheet, so it's just this one here, form responses one. Now I can continue. And what Zapier does is it will pull in a test for you to help you create the rest of your zap. So the reason I'd already entered a submission in my form is that so Zapier has something to pull in. When I click on this response, you can see that the data that I've filled out in my submission has been pulled through into Zapier. So I'm going to click continue and Zapier tells me I need an action step to finish. So in Trello, I've created a client leads board with these three lists. And the idea is that I want Zapier to take my form submissions and put them here into this left column, the new submission list, so that I get notified about new leads and then can manage them through the contact process. So with my Trello board set up, I'm gonna go back into Zapier and add the action that's gonna take the information from the form and put it into Trello. So I'm going to add a step. I'm going to choose the first option, add an action. And now I'm going to search for Trello. I'm going to choose to create a card, but you can see that there's many other options here. And then again, I'm going to connect my Trello account. So here's where things get interesting. In my Trello setup, I'm going to choose the board that the information is going to go to. That's going to be my client leads board. I'm going to put it into a new submission list. I'm going to give the card a name. And in this case, I'm going to put the name that was entered into the form. So Jane Doe. The description is where I'm going to put some of the other data gathered from the form. So here I'm going to put in their email address and I'm going to use this as a sort of long form text box. So I'm going to say email address because what's going to come through from the form is not the question itself, but just the answer, the email address. So I'm going to give it some context by adding some text into it as well. I'm going to add their company name. 
and put it here, company name. Or if I like, I can put it into the name of the Trello card so that when I look at my Trello board, I see not only the name of the contact, but also the company they are associated with. So in that case, I can just copy this and put it up here. And then I'll delete it out of here. And then the last one is, what does the company promote or sell? And then I'm going to add the field in again, just like before. Now you can see there are a bunch of other options here for Trello, including the label color or labels that are applied to the card, where the card goes, if somebody is added to the card by default. So I think in this case, I'm going to associate any new lead with myself so that I'm assigned the card. You can also get Zapier to add a due date to the Trello card. So on my lead form, I say, fill out the form and I'll get back to you in 48 hours. So what I wanna do for my Trello card is I wanna make sure that I'm getting to those leads within that time frame. So here in the due date, I can just put in 48 hours. Zapier can interpret that kind of language. As you can see, you can also add attachments and checklists, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So now when I continue, I can send a test card to Trello. You can see what kind of details it's going to send through. And there, I'm going to click Send Test to Trello. Zapier tells me that a test card was sent to Trello. So I'm going to head over to my Trello board. And here I see that Jane Doe, the form submission, has now been added to my Trello board as a card. It's been assigned to me. It's been given a due date for two days away. And in the description, I can see their email address and what the company promotes or sells. So that's great. I can now tell that the Zapier testing has worked. So I'm gonna go back to Zapier and I'm going to finish. I'm gonna name the Zap. and I'm gonna turn the zap on. Now, when I go back to my dashboard, I can see my new zap here. I can see that it's currently on. So, even though we've done some testing as we created the zap, it's always good to uh, go through it yourself once the zap is created, just to double check that the zap is still working. So I'm gonna go and fill in another client. Now, when I go to Zapier and I look at my Zap, here within my Zap, it tells me that it will check my Google Forms for new responses every five minutes. So with this automation, I know that when I submit a form in Google Forms, it's not gonna show up immediately in Trello. It could take up to five minutes. If I go back to my dashboard, what I can do is I can force the Zapier Zap to run. So clicking run here will force Zapier to look for the trigger. You can see it's triggered on one new item and the create card creation was successful in Trello. So now when I go to Trello, I expect the new card to have been created and it has been. So my Zap is running well and is functional. If I ever want to check what my Zap has been doing, I can click this arrow and look at the task history. We can see that the test run that I just did was successful. And if I click on here, I can go in and see the data that was passed between the apps. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial, and I wish you all the best with creating your own form automation. Please feel free to reach out if you have any trouble, and I'll be happy to help.